Hi, I'm Dr. Salman Rakhar. I'm a GP in South Buckinghamshire, and I'm also the president of BIMA, the British Islamic Medical Association. As we prepare for the holy month of Ramadan, it's a chance for us to revisit our routines and think about our health as well as the health of those around us. Have you got any top tips that we can follow for a healthy Ramadan this year? So a few things to keep in mind during Ramadan is firstly that it is um, a marathon and not a sprint. And when we're preparing for a marathon, it's really important that you do some training. And the days leading up to Ramadan, those people who have got um, particular health conditions or people who do uh, work where it's really important that they maintain optimal performance need to be thinking about how they can make sure that they enter Ramadan with the best possible foot forward. So for many of us, we struggle with um, getting our routine right for Ramadan. So things around sleep are really important. So having a good night's sleep is really important for our health, regardless of whether or not we have any health conditions. So finding out what a good Ramadan sleep routine looks like for you and your families is really important. And try and get that done ahead of Ramadan rather than finding that you're struggling in the first few days. Similarly, a lot of us do enjoy a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, um, and we find it difficult to suddenly stop drinking that and can suffer from caffeine withdrawal headaches, for instance. Try doing that a bit earlier so that you don't have that problem on the first of the Ramadan fast. The other thing to think about in Ramadan is we are spending so much time thinking about what we're going to be eating, when we're going to be eating, who we're going to be eating with, thinking about when we're sleeping. Our whole routine completely turns upside down for the month of Ramadan. Do consider taking this opportunity to think about doing the things that you haven't had the time to do. And for those people who smoke, you'll know that smoking invalidates your fast. If you can, do think about using this Ramadan to quit smoking, if you take the patches that you can put on your skin as a nicotine replacement, that won't invalidate your fast and that may help with your cravings, not only during the month of Ramadan, but also after. And many people can use Ramadan very successfully as a means to stop smoking. Similarly, if you feel like you need to lose a bit of weight, Ramadan is also a great time to be thinking about your meals and the frequency of of how often we eat and the types of food that we eat to change them to more healthy and more wholesome options so that we can lose weight during Ramadan and continue doing so afterwards. Many people also aren't sure about their physical activity during Ramadan and sometimes find it easier to just stay at home and not be physically active. That is tempting, especially when days are long and hot, but do think about using the evenings to go for a walk And for those of you who are more active, uh, do consider looking at specialist resources as to how you can maintain a healthy physical regime. When we think of Ramadan, we automatically think about the fast. But it's important to bear in mind that not everyone can fast safely. If you have a long term medical condition, for example, it's important that you speak to your health professional about that beforehand. This is especially the case if you have been recently diagnosed with a new condition since last Ramadan and you're not sure how to go about fasting. You need to be thinking about changes to your daily routine as well. And of course, this includes medication. Taking anything outside of fasting hours, of course, won't invalidate your fast. But it's really important that if you do have regular medicines, that you might want to consider setting an alarm to make sure you take your medicines on time. Um, And whether or not you need to make any changes around your medication. Some of the things that can be done are around changing your medication in terms of the type of tablets or uh, other things that you take, or it can be looking at the timing of your tablets and uh, the medication that you take. So it's really important that you have those conversations in advance so that changes can be made in good time for Ramadan. And it's important that you continue to take your medication during Ramadan so that you continue to be in good health to gain the benefits of Ramadan. Ramadan is, of course, a very social month and we value Uh, coming together, that may not be something that everyone is able to take part in. Um, Sometimes that can be due to um, mental health issues that people are experiencing. And it's important that people are open and are able to discuss that with their friends and families. Most people do find a lot of benefit, a lot of um, therapy in being able to spend time with one another, being able to take part in the rituals of Ramadan, the evening prayers and uh, reciting the Quran. Um, And for a lot of people, Ramadan is actually quite a uh, beneficial month in terms of their mental health and indeed their spiritual health. So it's important that we look at Ramadan holistically. Unfortunately, um, COVID is still around um, and flu is also circulating alongside other 
viral illnesses as well. So if you are feeling unwell, please consider um, not going out to try and prevent those people with underlying health conditions, particularly elders and other vulnerable family members to make sure that they don't get unwell. And once you are better, of course, if you do meet up, do think about opening a window so that you don't allow viruses to circulate when you're indoors. You can still get your first and second primary COVID vaccine uh, or third dose if you have a weakened immune system as well. And remember that a vaccination during Ramadan won't invalidate your fast, as per the opinion of the majority of Muslim scholars. And evidence shows that it's the safest way to boost your immunity against the virus so you can protect both yourself and your loved ones. You can find out more by going to the British Islamic Medical Association's website at britishima.org.